Blog Talk Radio. Uh... and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. But before we get into that conversation, I would like to introduce the Celtic Queen of Questionable Comforts, Her Holiness Incarnate, Amelia Santara! Hi, everybody. Good to be here. Um, Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Kristen. Um, Just to let people in the chat room know that I do not have the chat room in front of me tonight. Um, My second computer in the house has gone bust, and a little notepad that is belonged to my son is not working correctly either. So I don't have you um, in front of me, and I miss seeing you all there. So hello to everybody. Um, and Chrism, do you have the chat room in front of you? Well, it's sort of in front of me. It's kind of maybe off to the okay. side, a couple inches. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but you can see them, and if there is anything wrong with the sound in that, you can you can read that there. Yeah, or questions. Let me let me ask uh, Julia. Julia, is the sound coming in okay? And while we're waiting for that uh, reply there, let me begin, as always, by giving people the address they can go to if they want to make a donation to Kundalini Awakening Systems and to support the work that Chrism does. Is the sound okay? Yes. Have it in. <laughs> oh, sure. I, just, I, I just walked all over your words. That's all. My apologies. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let me begin again. Yes. For those of you who would like to support Kundalini Awakening Systems and the work that Chrism does on the internet and on Skype and in the very many ways that he supports people who are going through the Kundalini Awakening um, process, the place you can go to is www.ascension kundalini.blogspot.com and on the upper right hand corner you will see the donate button and from there it's very easy to make a donation and as we always say to those of you who are listening to this show in the archives and live there is no pressure on anybody to feel that they have to donate and yet many people you know are interested in donating and are in a position to donate so if this is you then any donation that you make, large or small, would be very much appreciated because the work that prison does is really very, very vital. There's nobody else doing this work, and it's sacred work, and it does need financial support. And so, again, if you are in a position to do so, the place to go to is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. So thank you very much. And Prism, as always, I'm looking forward to the show and being with everybody for the next two hours or so. Okay. Thank you for that announcement. This show, I'm just wanting to clarify some of the paths that that uh, into the Kundalini that I think are, shall we just, you know, for lack of a better term, full of grace. And the path of the safeties, of course, I'm going to uh, give as the number one path of grace. Uh, It goes, because it's not controlled by a religious belief system, but is incorporative of basically all religious belief systems, uh, there's a a purity to it that that applies to a a large uh, population segment. And so I feel the safeties are the number one um, platform for having the Kundalini with, but also for coming into the Kundalini with, because they are a they are a Shakti pot, a self-realization platform, and they're not 
you know, it's not difficult, and that kind of belies some of the effectiveness of the safety protocols. The safety protocols are extremely effective. You don't you don't like gurus, you don't like teachers, flesh or otherwise. You kind of just want to go off and do your own thing and have your own experience. Well, that was kind of like me too. You know, I I didn't really after in the earlier stages, you don't really care. You still have a lot of uh shall we say <laughs> inner guidance that is that is away from from um uh being able to surrender to positive guidance forces that the kundalini may bring, you know, into your into your orbit. Now that being said, you know, eventually that does occur and then you you really want to look at, at what is being sought and why and, and who is being spoken to uh because it does count. What you say now counts. When you come onto the kundalini path, when you're practicing the kundalini safeties what you say matters because it is an ex, an exterior vibration of an inner vibration. Okay, and the, these these vibrations uh, fill with with uh, consciousness. They they because of the amplica- amplification through the kundalini that you're work you're beginning to work with and it's beginning to work with you. Even your thoughts are laced with the kundalini shakti if 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 not permanently then for as much of a time as you can handle at that moment but you have to make that commitment first and you make that commitment by practicing these safety protocols they are the best now if you can't do the five tibetans then then you know talk with me we'll we'll figure out something else for you to do uh but the five tibetans were developed for 80 year olds octogenarians so I would like you to take that in consideration when you find the uh, the uh, five Tibetans to be difficult for you of course you know we're always going to have people with special needs and of course those special needs will be dealt with however for the most part uh, do the five Tibetans and the associated practices it's not just the five Tibetans the five Tibetans are just the first thing that you do. I think Amelia may have mentioned some of the websites. She did the donation website. But we're also on the Facebook network at Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point, Kundalini Healing, which is a public site. Um, so we're there. Kundalini Awakening Systems 3 and Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 are all there for people to partake of, to have conversations with, to exchange knowledge with. Uh, certain certain groups are, you know, slightly different than others. The newest group is Kundalini Awakening Systems Three, and that is that is a much more of a flexible approach. I've noticed on the uh, on the uh, uh, the Awakening uh, Exclamation Point group that uh, you know people, God, you know, they seem to be wanting to die to talk about their thing, you know. And so, Kundalini Awakening Systems Three is for you to be able to talk about your thing with the kundalini. I'm still not going to divert that much from uh, the focus of the group being about the kundalini. But, you know, it can be, you know, your your alien contact with the kundalini or your contact with a with a maybe a, a ghost or a, a, some sort of a spiritual vision or even your belief system in this group is welcomed as long as it's not, you know, you're not trying to dominate others with it. <laughs> Not that anybody listening to this broadcast would, would do such a thing. But anyway, so, yeah, Kundalini Awakening Systems 3, and then we also have uh, on the Yahoo Network, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups and Kundalini Healing at Yahoo Groups, and those are active groups. We're also on um, that uh, Google Plus under Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point. Um my my uh, Facebook page is Chris Mitchell or Chrisum Kundalini, however you wish to go with it. One one's just over the other, and uh, 
Welcome to meet any and all of you there on that network as well as the Yahoo network or my private email, which is kfireforall at yahoo.com. K-F-I-R, K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com. And, and uh, your holiness, please, please come back into the shocky red uh, color. I'm back. I'm back, Chris. And Thank you. YouTube, you, you haven't mentioned time. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? I said, what about YouTube? You haven't mentioned your YouTube channel. Ah, you're absolutely correct. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Uh, Chrisim.kundalini on the YouTube network. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder, Santara. Santara, tell me, how yes. has your practice changed as you as you begin to initiate the safety protocols? <sighs> what were you doing before Bring that? Bring that upon me there. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, the thing is, Prism, okay, I, I've been doing this, <laughs> I've been doing the safety protocol for as long, for a long, long time. And so they have been part of my life for a long, long time. Well, I first came to um, your group, the Yahoo group, back in 2009. And one of the very first things that I read was, obviously, the safeties. And immediately it resonated with me. Partly because, of course, you know, um, some of the safeties I would have been doing, and I'm putting that in inverted commas, in the sense that, yes, I would have been practicing some forgiveness. And there were particular things in my life that were going on that I was struggling with around forgiveness and that. And I was trusting my process up to a point at that particular time. I was surrendering. But when I received the safety protocols, and of course I was never doing the Tibetans, um, I began to consciously practice them, and they were very, very different. They became very, very different then to, let's say, what I would have perceived them as being before I began to practice them, if that makes sense. Um, it's very easy to say, and I do too, you know, oh, yeah, I do forgiveness. But in the context of the safety and the way that they are given, the forgiveness is, um, as an example now, all of the safety are this way, but the forgiveness is something that is to be done um, very actively. It's very actionable. And um, the, the forgiveness along with the recapitulation, you know, the writing down, and so just taking that one safety, I would practice that at least once a day. I would set aside time to do that. And then also the teaching of the safety is that we apply these um, protocols or these practices. We insert them into our day. So I would have began, this would have began to expand for me the more I practiced it. So I, I would have began to do some instant forgivenesses around things that would have happened. So, um, so if people you were, you, know, you were feeling um, you were feeling uh, almost instantaneous response from from say uh, working on the forgiveness. Yes. And then you would channel that response into into what? <sighs> Blank. Okay. What, I'm, what I'm saying to you is, what I'm trying to say is, in my day, I would begin to use forgiveness in a very active way. So as not just setting aside time to do it, I would do that, but also it became part of my living in my day. So when yeah. things would arise, if I was angry or if somebody did something to upset me or did something wrong to me, I would go into instant forgiveness it be, just became part of what i i began to to do in my day um, and i would have struggled with it at the beginning and it just the more you practice it the more i mean the easier it becomes and it just becomes part of um the daily living um yeah, yeah as they all should they, they, this whole practice of the safety is just really it, it fits very well inside the daily living you know, especially when you're practicing it just in the morning, 
you know, then you have your whole day and then you practice it right before you go to bed. Basically, you're starting you're starting out your day and your night with, with a, a recognition of the Kundalini within, the sacred divine within. And in both areas, uh, one can receive uh, visions and instructions of how the Kundalini wants that person to be, to, to make a choice or make a decision or move a certain way or think a certain way. You know, there's all kinds of levels of guidance that are given from within the Kundalini visioning itself. And, you know, and of course, you know, we, we all know about having dreams and, and uh, many of us know about having the Kundalini help us in our dream life while we're sleeping. But it does also happen in the daytime. It'll happen just in a flash, in a moment. You know, you'll be sitting at your office working on your computer. You'll be driving your car. You'll be walking to the restroom. You'll be on the toilet. You'll be, you know, in, in many different uh, circumstances throughout your day, the Kundalini is with you all the time. And it will choose the perfect time with which to reconnect you with your awareness of the Kundalini being active and present within you. Have you had that experience? Yes. I have. I have. Amen. Cousin, Amen. I mean, Amen. 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 A woman. Amen. A woman. <laughs> a child. <laughs> Absolutely. This is very true. Um, Kundalini does that with me all the time. Um, and has done, you know, I mean, that is so very true. Um, one of the things that I just want to say as well, Quism, is, you know, we talk about this, you know, the, the safety is deciding to do, the Kundalini communicates anyway to us, but the safety is are the thing that, oh, what would I say, um, you have to, like, I anyway had to make a conscious decision to do them. Um, and so that's the way it is at the beginning. And you would say to people, you know, um, you would recommend that people would print out the safeties and become familiar with them and to place them in places like the office or the bathroom or the bedroom or your purse. And another thing that I did at the beginning of my process was there was two things. The first was I had some lovely cards that one of the members of our group had actually made out so like there was love and honesty and surrender, meditation, trust, forgiveness, all these things. And I had them on my wall. But another thing that you can do is you can write these out on little cards and, you know, just bring them with you and find something. I mean, it sounds very, you know, ugh. But, you know, when things come up and we say an emotional response comes, at the beginning, at least, for me, how do I respond to that? And I just found those little cards very helpful. I would look at them and I could see, oh, I can do tolerance. That would be a good one. And I would actively begin to become tolerant. And for me, at least, I don't know about other people, but for me, at least, I would have ha- I began in that way. Um, and that's how I began to use and insert the safety into my life. So yeah, just in case yeah. that would be helpful you know, for anyone passing it on. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. Thank you for no. that sharing. Very good sharing. Uh, you know, for the people that are doing the devotional practice, you know, certainly if you're doing the devotional practice with me, you need to be practicing the safety at the very least, twice a day, and optimally, uh, you know, five times a day with, you know, when you add in your devotional periods. And the reason why uh, this is so is, is the Kundalini agenda mixed with an intentional devotional agenda to the Kundalini and its exterior teachers is a very powerful uh, equation. Very powerful mm-hmm. equation, and things get cleaned up really, really quick. And things go on a very, very fast, uh, fast level of experience, and 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 so those within a devotional practice really need to be providing the kundalini with that outlet for expressive change uh, within their lives. And this is this is part of the whole surrendering aspect from the safeties. You know, we surrender to the kundalini. Kundalini wants to come through us in a certain way, wants us to clean up a certain level of karma, wants us to understand that surrender doesn't mean weakness. Surrender means merging. You're stepping out of your own way. 
So you're merging with his energy. And you're merging with Amelia Centaur's microphone. <laughs> yeah, I'm just hearing that. Are you putting me in the blue? <laughs> <laughs> okay, going into the blue. The sacred blue. So you merge with Amelia's microphone and 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 you also merge, you know, by listening to her voice with her kundalini to a degree as well. I wanted to speak a little bit about this too, is the is the Shakti transmission of the voice. When uh, when Amelia Centara comes on to the radio, she comes. She, there's a, a definite Kundalini-based personality steps in, and you know she. Gosh, you know you you listen to her, and she's been doing this type of radio work for years. She's so good at it. So kudos to her and her Kundalini. Um, it's not always the easiest thing to do to be able to step in like that and to talk that way and. And basically what we're looking at is levels of surrender that invite new levels of knowledge, new levels of what we would call downloading information. And the devotional path is very, very prone towards receiving those downloads. Um, The devotional path is really all about uh, going after the kundalini with love and with surrender and, and with the, the many, many different expressions and components that, that, that is within the, the understandings that we have of love. So it's a very, very, very uh, profound practice, and it's not for everyone. One of the martial arts that I would recommend with regards or in, in tandem with a practice of the safety protocols would be Aikido. You know the the art of balance, learning how to how to use force, uh, but not in the in in the in the forceful way of understanding it, but more in the adjudication of directing force, uh, inner force and outer force. So if if there was any kind of a martial art that uh, that I would support with regards to a kundalini practice, Aikido would be first on the list. And then various forms of Kung Fu after that. Uh, Kung Fu that that, uh, rely on the perception of the unseen. So some of them fall within that category. But the safeties themselves are an activation platform. And if you practice the safeties every day, twice a day, like I, I tell most people, morning and evening, and then in between, that is the, that's like the the field testing of the safeties. So during the day, when you go about your day, you're in your car, you're out of your car, you're in the store, you're out of the store, you're, you're in the job, you're out of the job, you're, 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 you know, you're in and out of a lot of different scenarios in your day. How much of that day, how much of that time of that day uh, did you think about the safety? Did you think about how you were responding to 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 situations, social situations, or or you know any of the situations that come to you in your life? How how did you flavor your thoughts with the safeties during your actionable uh, you know time? You know as you as you're at work or what you're doing in in your in your daylight time. How much of the safeties do you bring with you daytime? Have you made that list of family and friends that you need to forgive? I'm sure you're probably uh, one of the most active lists is the is the list of tolerance that you have to put up with <laughs> in your day. You know, whether it be from a coworker or friend or family or foe. You know, you have to tolerate a lot in your day. You think about the safeties as you tolerate these things? I invite you to. 
you know, when you walk in the Kundalini path, eventually there comes a, a time within that exploration of the Kundalini path when the Kundalini path itself begins to walk you. Then you're on your way. Then you're on your way. And so it's really good to get an idea of uh, of what it feels like and what, you know, what what types of indications uh, are best to practice with regards to either inviting uh, a new kundalini awakening in yourself or or if you already have the kundalini up, uh, a balancing and a stabilizing of your experience of it can be had through the practice of the safeties. And remember, this is this is not you know this is not owned by any single belief system. All belief systems are welcome to to be practiced within the context of the safeties, but this goes beyond religious belief systems. This is beyond that. This goes straight into the divine, and the divine. Ha- a part of the divine that is unspeakable, that has no name, that has no bond to one certain sociological uh, expression from a hominid species on a far di- distant planet, circling a circling a you know a star. We are going into the divine, not figuratively, but literally. And the divine is converging into us. And that changes the whole expression. That changes the whole deal. This is why uh, after the kundalini comes into you and and it's flowing within you and your activation sequence is well set and your... Yeah, and or your awakening sequence is is going along as as it needs to go. Now you're on the path. This is a path of balance. This is a path. This is a path of beatification, to be more accurate. Your holiness, the, the Celtic queen of questionable comforts. Yes, hello. I'm sorry. Hello. I, I had to address you by your official name. Okay. <laughs> I think I think you use that because it's so long. I will definitely be in the red before it's finished. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all my secrets, all my secrets are revealed. Um, <laughs> so here, here I am. Do you, <laughs> do you know what the word beatification means? Uh, beatification is that the process towards sainthood? <laughs> yeah, according to the Catholic Church. According to the Catholic there Church. The, yeah, and maybe that's, that's correct. And is it? Now, now what they what they use as a as a tool of symbol and a and a tool of uh population programming, the Kundalini uses as a tool of teaching. This Kundalini awakening activation is far more in line with beautification or beatification than somebody dying under the worst possible, uh, you know, uh, scenario. Or just even for natural causes. Okay. Beatification is occurring with Kundalini awakening. This is what happened to St. Francis of Assisi, St. Giles, his disciple. This is what happened to St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Avila. This is what happens to people that have the Kundalini. This is a sturdy, normal, natural. Now you're eating a lot of corn chips these days. Um, yeah, yeah, hang on here. <laughs> He just loves those corn chips, you know. Organic free range. So yeah. What was I saying? So so we're stepping straight into the divine with the practice of the safeties. This isn't so much an observation of of a belief system. This is going straight to the divine. 
in all, you know, where all the belief systems end up. Their convergence point into the divine is we, we step slightly beyond that and go straight into the divine connection at the base of our spine and the top of our head and in our hands and in our feet and in our fingers and our toes, our eyes and nose and mouth and genitals and umbilicus and all the chakra systems. We step into the divine and the divine steps into us. That is what comes from a practice of the Kundalini Awakening Safety Protocols, commonly called the safeties. It's free. You just have to do it. That's the cost, is your self-animation towards doing this. It's about an hour if you do the whole thing. But let me tell you, for those of you that already have the kundalini, well, you know the importance of this. You know, you either feel it or you don't. And and I think most most of the kundalini people would feel a a very positive inclination with the safeties because they can feel how how the kundalini follows itself within it. The kundalini knows itself, knows its own instructions, and and is, is very, very capable of just kind of pulling the individual consciousness towards a certain behavioral response or towards a certain dietary response or towards a certain type of uh, instruction that the kundalini wants that person to learn. It can do that. It can pull you right into it. And and that's a good thing. It really is. It's a good thing. It's a way of direct guidance that one can receive from the kundalini. And if you're ever unsure about, you know, this guidance that you're receiving, if you're ever unsure about it, you got to look at, at look some of the patterns of expression that it has that has given you through your your uh, contemplation with it. You know, look at the fruits. By their fruit shall you know them. So, has this has this uh, consciousness within you? Has it been kind to other people? Has it been exuding kindness and love and and a helpfulness towards others? Has it been guiding you in that direction? Or have there been more, shall we say, slightly selfish uh, uh, instructions? So you need to look. You need to look at these things and make these choices. Make these choices in a, with, a, with a clearer consciousness and a, a clearer understanding to what it is you're actually in, in joining here with the Kundalini. So you practice those safeties. Now those safeties generate kundalini. That spinning in the in the first Tibetan is a form of kundalini generation. This is where you get the whirling dervishes, you know, and that's how they would do their whole thing. Um, a lot of the Sufis, the desert Sufis, you know, you get the whole idea of a whirling dervish from the Sufi uh, understandings, and and so that first Tibetan is very very important. You don't skip it. You must expect to be dizzy with it. That's what gives you a, a, a clear and, 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 and wonderful instruction to lie down on your back and do that second Tibetan. If you're just starting with the safeties, then don't do more any more than six of each uh, of the five uh, Tibetan positions in this vertical yoga. This is vertical yoga. You're not on the 50-year plan here. Okay, your plan is happening right now. So it's important for you to practice these safeties twice a day. It's important to pay attention to the dietary restrictions as well. No caffeine under any circumstances. No caffeine. That's a hard one. I get it because we're so conditioned to have caffeine. I mean... You know, if you're just starting your awakening, um, then no caffeine for the first eight years. If you're if you're like eight years into it or more, uh, then you can probably handle a little bit because of the transformation. Unless unless the Kundalini through your uh, through your own uh, equation of it, you know, through its own decision within you, wants you to stay off it, then then of course you will stay off it as well. 
Okay. Uh, you practice the safeties. You practice surrender to the kundalini. You practice the safeties as an honoring to the kundalini within you. It's a recognition, a twice daily recognition with the sacred divine within you. And then, if you get really good with it, then during your day and during your night, you will also begin to have conversations with your kundalini within you. Perhaps it will use me as a teacher. Sometimes that occurs. But regardless of how the teaching is delivered or given or who's in it, uh, it is your practice of the safeties that is bearing fruit. That's something that you need to know. Any kind of belief system that that uh, in, that encourages really really strong levels of devotion can can awaken the kundalini. Christianity, uh, Islam, Hindu, Buddhist, you know all the all the many main religions. Uh, there are levels of devotion that, that a person can use or, or levels of meditation that, uh, that uh, the kundalini will use to bring about an activation in an individual that is, that is being called by their own kundalini to do that very same thing. They may, they may wonder why themselves. Why am I, why am I looking up these, these meditation techniques? My gosh, what's going on? I never used to be interested in that. And then boom, you know, they're interested and boom, Kundalini comes. So the divine has its agenda for each one of us and our Kundalini will activate. Even as we are searching for it, it will still activate according to its own plan with that individual. And how flexible that plan really uh, only has to do with the Kundalini and its interpretation of your karma as is being expressed through your life right now. So once again, this is a real-time, right-now scenario. You are being watched. You are being observed. Your, your uh, near-future experiences are being sculpted by your responses that are being observed in you right now. Kundalini is with you. Therefore, she's watching you. She's experiencing your life with you in a conscious manner. And I want to give you an example of that conscious expression of kundalini energy. And I want you, for those of you that are on the Facebook network, I want you to go to uh, the uh, Kundalini Awakening exclamation point group and look at the picture that I posted titled Kundalini Girl. This picture exudes kundalini grace. Okay, this this and, and and I know for a fact that this woman has had kundalini and it, you know, she she's she's got a really really good process going on and so of course, you know, I know for a fact that she 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 is verifiably kundalini awakening. But that picture pretty much says it all. That photo because of that kundalini grace within it can be used as a healing photo. I don't say that lightly. But there is the grace within that picture. And so it is I think it is it is my responsibility to bring your attention to that. For those of you that require that type the, the vibration that she is putting out and I want you to participate in that. Feel it. Let it come into you through your eyes. Let it imprint itself on your pineal gland. Feel the grace that flows through the, the vision. And once again, you know, this is all about really uh, acceptance and surrender to the Kundalini, even as you look at those kinds of pictures even as you look at the, the healing picture that I have, the two of them, okay? Practice the safeties in ways that, that kind of surprise yourself. 
how forgiving you are all of a sudden becoming as a, as Amelia was describing. How tolerant you are now as compared to how you were before. How connecting you become with with the intricate uh, understandings of life and how you, your understandings increase, you know, far faster than they than they would have before your recognition of the Kundalini. Finally, one of the one of the aspects of, of practicing the safeties is is an actionable based form of gratitude to the divine within you. Full gratitude for the gift that you're being given, the recognition of the gift that you're being given. I mean, you can be given a gift, but you, you, you don't know why it comes to you or what the whole reason behind the gift is. You're afraid to use it. Well, these gifts are from the Kundalini, and so you can take that understanding and you can utilize these gifts in a positive uh, application for the benefit of other people. This is what you do. You use those sacred gifts for the benefit of others, not the benefit of self. That's the caveat for even having them. You understand? It's not about how you can move that truck off a person so that you can be adulated as a hero. It's far more that you can move that truck off a person in an accident and then just kind of stabilize the situation as best as your Shakti allows you to do, and then you leave. You leave. As the emergency people pull up, you're walking to your car. You're walking to your car. And you go about your night or day or whatever it is. There's a diligence required of it too. I mean, you practice these safeties and and you have to practice them. It's something that because it won't for some people it will give them instant phenomena. For some folks, I have to admit. For some folks they'll get instant phenomena from it. Uh, for some folks they won't. Don't let that discourage you. You just keep going with them. And you listen to these broadcasts. One of the things that I was speaking about earlier was the was the vocal, uh, the aspect of the Shakti being given through the vocal manifestation of sound. And so this is my segue right now away from the safeties practice, which I still want you to do. But I'm going to go right into this, uh, the uh, the activated sound that comes from a person that is with the kundalini and the kundalini is with them and it's upon their voice and it's connecting to itself within you it's connecting to itself within you and and as it connects to itself it gives you certain phenomena certain urges certain options that that you haven't had before And these options are often of expansion, expanding into the kundalini grace, expanding into it. Sometimes it's of a detoxification, so something that you needed to get off your chest, you know, is finally given an option to get off your chest. And so that opens yourself, that opens you into having having a greater uh, sensation of of the kundalini healing come to you. Close the screen down a little bit. You can see everybody. Oh, I see. Okay. And, and Adrian has a question. Okay, we have a caller, so I'm going to have uh, the caller come right on in. Maybe I'll just do that myself. Here we go. Hello, Chris. Ahoy. Ahoy, matey. How you doing, sir? Good. Good. How are you, Adrian? I'm doing very well. I'm just really enjoying the show tonight, and I'm really glad you're talk- speaking about the five Tibetans. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Give me give me a few questions. Well, you know, I've I've been trying to do them, Chrism, um, and and I I realized that I was rotating to the left with the fir- uh, first Tibetan, and I was getting <laughs> really big. 
that's the wrong way to go, you know. Yep. That'll that'll leave a bad taste in your mouth for the Tibetans. <laughs> I, I I I understand that now, but now I, I'm kind of getting the same response when I'm going to the right. It's leaving me kind of sick, and I don't know if I kind of jumped uh, jumped into it too much. Um, I was doing 21 kind of repetitions of it to begin with. Well, I wouldn't. If I were you at this point, I wouldn't be eating spaghetti right before I did it. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, break it down to nine. Okay. Break it down to nine. I mean, I think that nine nine is a number that, that sits well with me with regards to you, my friend. Break it down to nine. And, you know, do the pranayama afterwards. Do the meditation afterwards. Do the compression prayer afterwards. Okay? Mm-hmm. What prayer was that, Chrism? What who? What was the name of the prayer you just said? Not quite getting what you're saying there. You you you, you mentioned a prayer at the end. The of, compression. Yeah. Compression. Compression prayer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's when. You... Hello. 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 I'm still here, Amelia. Hi, are you still there, Crism? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't hear him at all. Adrian, um, until he comes back, you were saying the prayer, the compression prayer, and the Shakti prayer. That's the other one. Yeah, oh, okay. I understand. Oh, there he is. He's back. I'm gone. <laughs> okay. The compression prayer and the Shakti prayer, Crism? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I felt that, you know, the, the, the five Tibetans were really kind of breaking my energy up in a positive way. So I'm kind of looking forward to breaking it down to nine and continuing on with that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good plan. Yeah, here's the the scenario with you, Adrian, is you are not in need of activating the Kundalini. You know why? Because <laughs> it's already activated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of that, I'm sure. That's exactly right. So I think nine is a nice uh, is a nice maintenance uh, uh, standard for you. It's still adding more into your equation, so you're still getting pushed, Adrian. Mm-hmm. And you'll continue you'll continue to get pushed because there are certain areas of a development that are that are still uh, occurring within you, and so you'll get pushed, but your response to that pushing might improve. Okay. 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 I, I, re- I really loved what you and Amelia had to say <clears throat> about forgiveness this evening because uh, that's something that seems to be kind of manifesting in my life as a result of the safeties. Uh, you know, it's it's just showing up today automatically. How cool is that? Wow. Yeah, Very it's nice. unbelievable. Yeah. Very nice. Well, it's a good, that's definitely, and that just, just should illustrate for you, Adrian, how your path is just going so well, how you're really following the grace. You are exactly where you need to be at this time in your life with regards to kundalini and everything that adds into the kundalini, which is everything in your life. Mm-hmm. So you're doing well. You're doing well. Yeah. I just want you to, I want you to validate that you know, to yourself. Well, I, I really appreciate that, Chrism, and I know that I would definitely be lost on this path without your help, and, you know, I, 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 I'm I really grateful for what you do because I've been a seeker for many years, and I haven't found anyone that knows the Kundalini as you do or, you know, is doing the work that you're doing, so I really uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Well, thank you for, thank you for listening. Thank you for asking and saying such nice things. Okay, um, going into the sacred blue uh, and bringing out her holiness, your holiness, your highnessness, the Celtic queen of questionable comforts. Oh, I'm sorry, you went to the bathroom. Okay, I understand. Oh, I think we lost her. 
Oh my gosh, she's gone. I'm stranded with all of you. <laughs> well, here's the deal. I want to go right back into into the vocal aspects of the Kundalini. I should probably be doing more singing on these on these shows and and uh, and I'll I'll ask it to the uh to the chat room right now. Do you think I should initiate more singing into these into these uh, programs, uh, Elizabeth, uh, Julia, Julie, uh, Madeva, this secret. I mean, you know, do do you feel that that type of vocal transmission is something that uh, people would want to hear? Sure. Fast, she says, sure. I'm not sure if that means sure or sure, whatever. Fine. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, my dad. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> sure, Master C. <laughs> uh, Mary had a little lamb. Okay, there you have it now. But I think that with the regards to the sound transmission, uh, listen, listen to what happens to you. Feel what happens to you. Open yourself to receiving this grace in this way. So I'm going to bring her back on here. I have returned. <laughs> um, wasn't Adrian's voice just gorgeous? Did you, light a, <laughs> did you light a match? I love the Northern Ireland accent. Um, and no, I did not light a match. Oh, I see what you mean. I actually got disconnected. I don't know if you realize that, but anyway. <laughs> so, oh, you're you're talking about uh, Adrian's accent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're one to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so that's well, what I think. You have a very smooth uh, radio persona. I just want you to know. We all notice it. Okay. Very well, nice. thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank I you. have a few questions gathered, because and will I would now Please be a do. good time? Go ahead. This okay. is good. good time. Okay. Well, the first one, one of them is, and I'm going to quote it. Maybe, maybe Chrism could talk a little about the purpose of having psychic or prophetic type dreams in a Kundalini context. Like you have a dream and then something very similar to what happened in the dream happens in real life. Now, not talking on a grand scale here, more having to do with our personal lives and those close to us. 
So, for example, why would we hear the screaming of someone close to us in a dream? And how would a devotional practice help with that sort of thing? Thank you. Well, a devotional practice uh, can can bring that up for it to be looked at, and that in itself is a, is a very great uh, assistance for a person that, that's having that type of phenomena. Well, of course, it's dealing with your fears, your fears of something bad happening to your sister, which is causing her to scream. Okay, So you're being tested with your fears. You're being tested with how much you trust your kundalini awakening equation to only give you the phenomena and expose you to phenomena that allows you to confront your own inner demons and come into a greater expression of fearlessness into your pro- into your process. So often family members and children will be used if you're a parent, you know, you, it'll be one of your kids that's being, you know, kidnapped and and, 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 you know, brutalized in the next room or something like that. You know, they'll use, you know, the, the Kundalini will use those fears in order to teach you how the correct way to respond is to be had within a Kundalini context. A Kundalini context is very different from a, a, a 2015 uh, A.D. Uh, Western uh, industrial nation um, would understand that context. Very different. We're talking blending dimensional realities. And then the other, you know, the, the normal person, shall we say, the mundane mind does not. Uh, does not enjoy that so much as a as a as a fact of life. They don't enjoy that, and so uh, you, as a Kundalini awakened person, you have no choice but to to acknowledge that that understanding. Okay. Yeah. So, so with regards to why would you get a certain thing? Why would you get a certain manifestation? Why would you get the ability to have prophecy uh, and yet not the ability to make a difference in for to help people avoid that prophecy? Or what would be the purpose of having that prophecy if it's not to help other people? People have to encounter. Uh, tribulation in their life. They have to be stressed in many different ways, and there's like there's so many different ways to stress a human being. I can you know I can't even begin to I can name you some of the most popular ones are with love and lust, you know, with greed, with power, those types of, of ways we stress uh, we are stressed as human beings, and those stresses are what really uh, help us formulate our levels of compassion our levels of, of willing to help others. Okay, it's it, it's a very necessary part of our evolution. It's how we respond to our to repeated stresses. And this is what the DNA learns from your life. This is what you pass on through your DNA to your kids. Okay. For those of you that have children and are kundalini active, well, you could, those genes are in your kids too. So just so you know. So with regards to phenomena, uh, phenomena is there to teach you. It is there to teach you, and it can teach you through the assistance to others, or it can teach you just through a through the point that it wants to make with you on a one-to-one basis. Typically, these one-to-one basis uh, teaching scenarios include uh, the ability to expand it into and, and much further into the social environment. But for you, the teaching may just come individual at first, and then you'll be able to expand it into the social environment later. Okay. So, you know, you're given the ability to have prophecy but you're not being given the ability to fix it because it it doesn't require you to fix it. As ugly as it may seem, that airliner going down or, or that uh, that bus going off a cliff, whatever it may be, that event 
is for you to see, not to refuse. Okay? You don't get to refuse it, meaning it, it's going to happen. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It has nothing to do with whether or not you are there to, to, to make a difference. You can pray for that not to occur, however. If you see a bus in a vision or an airliner in a vision, will you pray? Immediately go into pray and pray for, for a positive outcome to that situation. Give your give your you know give a burst of divine uh, happiness into that situation, and move on. Don't attach to it at all. Just move on. Just as you give throughout your day, you smile that beautiful, brilliant, radiant smile to somebody. You know, and you don't know that it hasn't changed their life. You don't know how many smiles they get or don't get in their life. Or maybe at a time that they need, they really need to have someone just smile because of the rest of their life is really hurtful at the moment. You don't know what your power is doing for those around you. You may not get the, uh, the, the pat on the back. You may not get the compliment for doing a good job, except I, I typically try to give that. But the Kundalini doesn't necessarily do that because it's not necessarily there to feed your ego with 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 an accounting of your good deeds. <laughs> it's not typically part of the deal with the Kundalini. Sometimes I will do that because I know I'm I'm, I'm talking to egos right now. And the egos need to see. They need to see what can be. So when you look at the Kundalini girl photograph there, you'll understand what the Kundalini can be as it comes through you. As it comes through that girl's eyes, that's how it can come through yours too. In your own special way, in your own special merging with the Kundalini. So your expectations of being able to do certain things when, when a prophecy comes to you or or when another type of a uh, phenomena exposes itself to you, does it really matter to the Kundalini what your expectations are? It's it's introducing you to these states so that maybe later on, you know, when these when these come in a more prolific fashion, or they they're 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 talking with you in a in a in a more focused way, maybe then you'll be allowed to do what you need to do with it. At this point, though, I'm going to suggest you do your surrenders to the Kundalini. You accept what it's giving you. You accept what it's showing you. You allow it to teach you in the way that it wants to teach you. And that may not always be the most pleasant way to learn, but that's the way that it wants you to learn at this point. So you pay attention to those dreams. You write that dream journal so that you can reread it Write that dream journal every night. Put those dreams in. All right. Next question, my dear. Oh my gosh, she went blue. Oh, I'm here. Ha <laughs> <laughs> The finger, my finger is torn. The stress. <laughs> okay. And um, actually, this next one um, may have been, if my memory serves, may have been asked by Adrian. Um, he said, does anyone have any experience with having a huge appetite? Even after having a substantial meal, I don't feel satisfied. I have changed my diet around and tried to cooperate with the energy, but it won't seem to shift. Could you say why this might be occurring? Testing your, 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 your willingness to obey the, the directions that it's giving you. Using hunger is a very basic tool for that kind of a test. Uh, it it gives you that that non satisfied feeling, no matter how much you eat. And so I would I would suggest that you see this as a test, and as you see this as a test that you can pass, you choose not to respond in a more you know gluttonous fashion with the food. Take only the amount of food that you require. Don't expect to experience the satisfaction of it. 
Taking the satisfaction out is also taking out the addictive quality of food. So maybe some aspect of, of an addiction is being worked on as well with regards to the, to the food intake. So look at that. The kundalini will cause you to lose weight, but it can also cause you to gain weight. Okay, it can also cause you to go one way or the other, depending on what the teachings are there for you and how it wants to begin to expand those teachings into your active everyday life. <clears throat> for you, though, Adrian, I'm seeing that uh, it's taken out the that satisfaction, that that fullness that you get when you've eaten enough, and so it's it's taking out that payback, that payoff for you. And let that be the case. Let that be the case. It's all good. You just make sure that you, you eat uh, enough of a, of, a, of a good, balanced, caloric, and, and protein uh, uh, meal time. You don't put too much in. You don't put too little in. And you enjoy the fact that you don't have to worry about being satisfied or not with the food. All right, Centaur, next one. Okay, Chris, and it's about food again. Um, the person says, you write about filling our bodies, you know, if we are filling our bodies with toxic food and chemicals and all of that, and we're not supposed to do it. So what happens for individuals who can't afford, you know, to buy organic food produce in a kundalini context? Will kundalini react to those toxins? Yeah, well, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, that person may be compelled to leave the area. That person may be compelled to move away. Um, if, if, that compar- if that person isn't compelled in those ways, then the food that they eat will be utilized by the kundalini. But, you know, some of the, some of the toxic side effects may be lessened by the kundalini itself. For instance, when I was homeless, I couldn't afford to buy anything but the, the very cheapest food, you know, the, the food that Monsanto grows and Dow Chemical, you know, grows and, you know, all these really, really, really big toxic companies. I had to eat that food. I had to eat the food that I knew wasn't that healthy for me, but I had to eat it nonetheless. And the Kundalini detoxified those things for me. Didn't mean that when I had money and I could buy organic that I that I would just you know would save the money and not buy the organic. Of course I would buy the organic food. But if I didn't have the money, then I didn't have the money. This is part of what it is to surrender to the Kundalini. You surrender your life to the Kundalini, meaning that it controls how much money you have. It controls what you spend it on. And it's not this this it's not such a servile type thing as it may sound to some of you. It's not that way at all. It it feels like more of an agreement. It feels like more of a teaching, a, something exciting, something that you want to learn about. This merging with the divine is a beautiful gift, an exceptionally beautiful gift. And and it and it feels good, and it and it. The, the whole experience is just amazingly beneficial and helpful and good. The divine experience goes beyond my words to describe it. But, you know, as I focus on the surrendering aspects to it, I can see that that can get a little tedious for people to hear. I understand that. I understand that it can be tedious to hear it. But you need to hear it anyway. You need to hear it anyway, because that is where you reap the, the rewards, really, is by learning how to have a, a semi-divine body. Half divine, half human. Think about that. Why do you think Kundalini brings with it such amazing phenomena? Is it just so that you could... Uh, you could get into a Cecil B. DeMille movie or a, a Steven Spielberg movie. Now already, already there's a script out there called The Attack. The Attack of the the Celtic Queen of Questionable Comforts. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when society... <laughs> was changed by her presence within it. 
Only good things. Only good things. Okay, my dear, next question. Next question, Chris. Um, I'm wondering if you would be willing to share your take on the phenomenon of psychic vampires. And this person noted that you alluded to this in one of the things you wrote about, but then couldn't find specifically what you wrote on the topic. So would you share on psychic vampires? What am I sharing about? I'm sharing about psychic vampires? Yeah, yeah. The phenomena of psychic vampires. The phenomena? The fact of it. I mean, the actual draining of the energy, you know, the, the... (laughs) <laughs> the, the, the food <laughs> okay well I guess we'll we'll just go one way or the other with that yeah psychic vampires they exist in, in, uh, in, in many different forms a succubus and an incubus are a form of a psychic vampire and they, they siphon off the life force vis-a-vis the sexual act so they'll, they'll encourage you if, if you start having sex with something that you don't understand or you don't see or you don't you, you know, it's not your partner, uh, then you want to stop having that sex. Don't let it encourage you anymore. With the men, the uh, the encouragement will come in a, in a stimulation of the sexual organ. And, you know, it just continues and continues and continues. It's remorseless. And, and, and you know, and then, then it will try to harvest those energies, you know, at that certain point. And so you don't want to uh, to allow yourself to be hijacked that way okay uh so so yeah uh these types of of, of parasites you know they move freely uh they're just something that's part of the of the the new nature of of the of the dual uh the dual dimension that you're living with the kundalini awakening Okay, and so what about psychic vampires within a body chrism, you know? Psychic vampires those, those are the entities. <laughs> right? You know, you'll get parasitical entities that will, you know, basically live in your body and use your energy as a form of of continuation. They a lot of it, you know, a lot of them are, are relatives that have died and you went to the funeral and they jumped in because they you know, they were afraid. People are afraid even after they've died. They're still afraid. Fear is something that travels between the dimensions of the living and the dead. And so, so you know, these kinds of entity attachments are also of a psychic vampiric type of expression. And so it's it's always uh, beneficial to, to take stock and take a, kind of an inner accounting of where our energies are going. And how much love is, is being given into the populations regardless of how your own personal game is feeling? How much love are you putting into into your your social environment, your biological environment? Where are the constraints of your love? Okay? And within within the understanding of love, you don't need to give it to a psychic vampire. There are other people, other creatures that need it far worse. Okay, so you just visually turn off the spigot to them. You know, you you put up a uh, something that separates you from them. Make it a door or a wall, or you you know you push them away because you don't need to be harvested without your permission, which is basically what occurs. Next question. Oh, thank you, Chrism. Does the Kundalini energy that I receive through Shakti Path touch people near me, like my family, or is that a misconception? No, that's not a misconception. That's a pretty good conception of it. And yes, it does. Yes, it does touch them. Yes, it does. And, and, and even more so than you realize it, you know, not you, the very fact that you have the Kundalini at all. Every member of the household is is saturated with it. That's why I say, you know, it does travel in families. Every member of the household becomes saturated with the kundalini, and it will work through them as it and that individual's agenda require it to work through them, vis-a-vis the karma and other 
and other uh, uh, markers for Kundalini. It will most certainly express into the, your family, and that is as it should be. You're not just giving birth to kids, you're giving birth to potential saints. There's a big difference. These are spirits that are volunteering to be your children uh, of a kundalini quality. So you teach them about the kundalini. You let them know. Don't force them to experience your fears or your, your uncertainties about it. You let them come into their own level of clarity by validating their experience. So yes, yes indeed, the Kundalini will saturate the home and every part of the home for thousands of years. Yes. And you know, if a person did not have children and if they were living, say, with their mother or a brother who wasn't that aware of Kundalini, so it wasn't part of, we say, the dialogue or, you know, the relationship, you know, that, that was shared. If a person was in the Shakti path, um, would the Kundalini energy that they receive touch those people in their family as well? Yes. Yes. By virtue of that person practicing and receiving the Shakti Pot, yes. Because she's interacting with them all. Mm. The person's interacting with them all. And so, you know, I mean, you know, the, the, the fourth day of Shakti Pot, you know, the love day, they're receiving, you know, expanded levels of love, they're receiving it because she's giving it. So they are becoming directly uh, involved with the Shakti Pot by virtue of her participation within it. Yes. Okay, thank you. The next question is, um, could you explain about a heart awakening, please? A heart awakening, as opposed Mm -hmm. to a thought? (laughs) Heart, as in H-E-A-R-T, boom, boom. (laughs) Not not, not heart. (laughs) <laughs> and the person says I think back two years ago um, when it started for me this is what occurred I felt the initial fluttering of the heart area and then bliss and not so much bliss now now it's more mental more emotional but I would like to know a little bit more about heart awakening please well they're really good uh, they feel really good. It's when the bottom meets at the fourth and the top descends down the seventh and meets in the fourth as well. So you have an upward flow and a downward flow meeting at the fourth chakra, which makes it very, very special, very, very happening, uh, vibrantly beautiful and blissful and loving, divine love uh, permeating that person's experience for quite some time. Uh, unification. You can have the, the you can have the merging with the divine during that as well. So yeah, it's a very 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 beautiful beautiful experience. And I know because I know I know how that feels. So yeah, it's a very potent very powerful thing. But you want to just make sure that your uppers and your lowers are are in good balance. I.e., you're practicing the safety protocol. It will blow your mind no matter what. Uh, You will be transformed uh, in a huge way. Uh, But it it is the most beautiful uh, way to come into the Kundalini uh, for some. And and for others, you know, the the head off the top is also very, very, very beautiful too. Uh, But yeah, that's a heart activation into a heart awakening. A lot of love, a lot of service. Um, a lot of pain detoxed if you've had uh, 
you know, your heart broken emotionally, a lot of emotional body detox with that. Um, some good possibilities for healing skills to come along. That uh, that heart activation is is greatly uh, accelerated through devotional practices. Okay. Through the devotion. Next question, my dear. Once Kundalini has reached her final stage of the crown chakra, what then? Does she stay erect? How will you feel weeks, months, years after she has come into her awakened state? And that's a direct quote, that question. Read it again. <laughs> Once Kundalini... <laughs> Um, once Kundalini has reached her final stage of the crown chakra, what then? Does she stay erect? How will you feel weeks, months, years after she has come into her awakened state? Oh, okay. That, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, you, go through phases. you go through phases of phenomena. You go, she's constantly moving. Even when it feels like you're not getting all the phenomena that you used to get, it's still moving within you. It's still maturing within you. you. It's basically the more important question is where do you place your attention within your process? How expansive are you in, in going through all the different systems of your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, your psychological body, your spiritual body? How many of those connections are you weaving together within yourself? And as you weave those connections together and you collect that power, what are you doing? with that power. How is that power being given into the populations in a helpful model? How is that power being given into healing? How is that power being given into the recognition of the divine force that the power consists of and therefore the surrender to that divine force and the guidance that that, that divine force will offer for the, for the benefit of all? Where is your attention placed? That is the focus. Um, as you focus your attention, so will you be given the fruits of that focus, so to speak. And if you, so if you're focusing your attention on the on the on the Siddic skills, uh, then then of course you're going to get a greater realization of those skills as per the Kundalini's choice with you. If you have a, a, a karmic disposition towards being a show-off, then you may not be allowed to demonstrate any kind of ascetic skill in front of other people as a, as a form of karmic balancing. Okay. Um, did I cover the question? Can you read to me the question again? Yes, I can, of course. Um once Kundalini has reached her final ah, stage of the right. crown. Okay, okay. So the destination, mm -hmm. the, the destinations for, for Kundalini awakening, and you go through the stages of Kriyas, you'll go through the stages of entities, you'll go through the stages of bliss and ecstasy, you'll go through the stages of plateau where nothing's happening, and you know you go from a very very vivid uh, dream life, a very very vivid uh, awaking vision-based life to nothing at all and oh my gosh you know how is this how am i supposed to deal with this you know this what did, what did i do to piss off shakti and then you'll go into places like the void you'll go into void experiences where nothing exists and nothing can exist and nothing will ever exist and yet there you are you'll go into uh, uh, some levels of life fragmentation where your life is totally changed no matter whether you like it or not, it's changed now, and and uh, you just have to trust and have faith that the Kundalini knows its best, uh, its best, uh, what is best for you at this time. It follows that uh, it follows a very vertical movement rather than a horizontal movement, though. One one level of sensation or experience or or, or cynic skill or Phenomena will impact another, okay, and, and and then those two will impact two others, and so there's a great level of compression between the different states that will occur. 
uh, you know, as you as you move along the Kundalini path. Then this will not be the same way with each person. This will be unique to each person. This is part of the unique qualities of your karma. Your karma is very unique, and it sculpts. The, the response that the kundalini chooses to give within that karmic disposition. So how you go is greatly influenced by your karma and the way the kundalini wants to express that karma within you. The different points of the shakti along the path, or you know, the ones that I just mentioned, these are these are... These are models that have been collected through replicability, you know, other people having very, very similar phenomena, uh, you know, you, but there will always be that little individual twist to it. So the examples I gave to you, such as the Kriya model, the entity model, you know, the, the ecstasy, the bliss, all of those models, those are models that many, many, many other people have also experienced. Not just you. Okay. Next question. Thank you, Prism. And um, the next question is coming up now, and here it is. And um, while in meditation, I fall into deep sleep where I saw myself with two eyeballs in each of my eyes, one brown and the other one black. And I saw that my eyesight had increased. But at the same time, I felt myself irritated by some bright red light. I just could not tolerate it. What does this mean? Well, it's like I, I remember that responding to that person that it's a possible entity infestation uh, and, and, and the kind of entity infestation that doesn't want you to receive that kundalini grace, doesn't want you to to see the red, to feel the red, blocking you from feeling that aspect of your equation and, and uh, going into your eyes and sharpening your eyes, but also using your eyes as a as a uh, as a tool of their own. So you stare at that red light. You stare at that blue light. You feel the effect of the sacred purple light that comes over you as you blend the two in your mind. Let no hitchhikers control your composure, which is all that they would be. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. And um, the next one is: I started a 10-day detox cleanse for personal health reasons, but I have heard doing cleanses and such can increase Kundalini activity. Is this true? Well, it depends really on what the practices the person is doing are. You know, are they the five Tibetans? And yes, of course, it will stimulate more Kundalini activity. Uh, is it uh, Ashtanga yoga or hot yoga or, you know, what kind of yoga is it? I mean, if you're doing a daily practice of yoga and you're beginning to converge into kundalini, then yes, yes, that that can, can continue that pattern of, of convergence into the kundalini. Uh, does it guarantee it? No, no, it does not guarantee it. Uh, but there is a good probability that if you're getting kundalini phenomena already, doing the practice, whatever that may be, Doing the current practice that you're that you're that you're practicing, then yeah, 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 more kundalini can be stimulated, more of a of a pattern of activation can be developed. Okay, it's just what I was saying about the the safeties. The safeties generate the kundalini. It generates it. That's what gives it that uh, that fountain of youth quality. Okay. So, yeah, uh, some of these other practices can do that as well. Um, Aikido, as I mentioned, as far as a martial art, but also Tai Chi. Tai Chi can bring this on. Certain levels of Qigong can take this, can begin to, to manifest these symptoms as well. 
And if you're going to practice those, always practice them from 3 to 6 a.m. That's the best time. Any, any time of the day is a good time, but those are the best times. Thank you. And the next question is, after being very sexual and feeling lustful to now nothing because of the loss of my lover, could this cause a blockage in the second chakra? The grief can cause a blockage. The kundalini won't cause a blockage. But the grief that you have over the loss of your partner can indeed cause a blockage. And you want to let that grief go. You want to... You want to honor the love that, that you shared with that person who has passed or who is no longer in your life. And you need to remember those positive moments and allow them to, to germinate a greater level of understanding of yourself and other people and how you relate and make it a learning proposition and then go out and be open to that next loving contact. Go out and be open with that. Um, be as forgiving it, uh, for yourself and for the other person as you possibly can be. You don't need or require to develop a blockage in the second chakra. You know, depending on how how fresh uh, this this teaching uh, equation is, will determine how fast you want to move. Sometimes you just need a break from it all. You just need to. Have some private time to heal. That doesn't mean you're developing a blockage. It means that you're you're taking some private time so that you can heal. It's important to do that, to take that time and make those moves. And sometimes the kundalini will enforce that. And you won't have a libido to worry about. That energy will be used in fixing you know, the, the damage done to your emotional body, the damage done to your third chakra, your fourth chakra, you know, those hurtful experiences. Those get to be healed by the kundalini. So, yeah. Yeah, um... Did I cover the question? I forget. Yes, you did, Chris, and very well, very well. Thank you. Um, the next question is, I had a strong Kundalini experience with astral projecting last night, which brought me to tears, and this morning my head is pounding like crazy. Are these queers? Well, yeah, I mean, you can get some head pressure going on. You can have some... Uh, you can have some physiological uh, ex, uh, expression coming from uh, astral projection. Uh, you can, you know, per, a person can feel dizzy. They can feel like they've got a massive headache. Uh, they can become light sensitive. They can become prone to uh, to uh, migraine headaches uh, if they aren't already. Uh, these are all steps towards the kundalini. The uh, the out-of-body experiences are always stepping towards kundalini, stepping towards a greater understanding of self, a greater understanding of self as opposed to just being a body. You know, when you ask to project, you're, you're being given levels of information that not everybody else has. You know what happens when you sleep. There is, there is no mystery. And many of you know what happens when we die, too. That is no longer a mystery. So, yeah, when, when we have these astral projection uh, coming at us, the kundalini is also talking with us. Guiding us in what we will experience as we explore the astral consciously. Where we will fly, who we will meet, what we will do, what kind of uh, exercises will be given to us to improve our self-identity, our self-validation, without becoming, uh, you know, fixated on the ego with it, that, you know, walking that balance be between self-validation and, and egotistic expression. Mm -hmm. 
yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you, Gruzin. Um, then there was a question on the groups about the eighth chakra. Um, somebody asked, you know, that they hadn't seen anything in your literature about the eighth chakra, and would you acknowledge that, that there is such a thing? Would you speak about of that? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so, you know, and that's not true, by the way. I remember very specifically writing about the eighth chakra, so they just they just haven't found it. Haven't come across it, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There's very little you haven't spoken of, actually, Chris. <laughs> I know. The, the, you know, the, the seventh chakra lights up, but there are more. There are more energetic uh, senses that light up as the seventh chakra goes. You know, that initiates a whole other energetic anatomy into being. And uh, that energetic anatomy has its uh, certain points of, of uh, a convergence into the divine expression. And so, yeah, the eighth chakra, if you want to call it the eight, chakra uh you know that's that's viable i will i i will validate its existence yes in my god <laughs> the god voice yes it, it, it exists <laughs> oh actually um now that you've mentioned your voice and and you were speaking earlier you know about about the sound and the voice and that. Could I just say something a little, uh, uh, something about the CD, the Kundalini Music by Chrism? Um, can I take the opportunity to do that now? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, there is a CD, um, and the title of it is Kundalini Music by Chrism. There are eight tracks on it. And this CD is available if you are interested in in acquiring it. Um, I just posted a link on the Kundalini Awakening exclamation mark. Um, you'll see a photograph um, of Kundalini Music by Prism, and you'll see the link that will give you an example or a taste of one of the songs that is on the CD. This one is called How Beautiful Art Thou. And you can listen to that and you can allow that to go into your ears and into your spinal cord and all of that. And you, you'll, hear, you'll hear the Shakti upon it. And, and if you are interested then in getting the CD, just to let you know that the suggested donation for this also supports the TAS program and supports this financially. So again, it's another way of donating. So if you live outside of North America, you can get in contact with me through Facebook and send me a message, and um, I can set up sending you a CD. If you're living in the USA or Canada, um, make contact with Eileen Loro on Facebook, and she can let you know um, about ordering the CD from that part of the world. So do check it out on Kundalini Awakening exclamation mark and have a listen to Chrism there singing one of the songs that is on the CD. So that's it, Chrism. I don't have any more questions and um, I'm just wondering about the seminars and that. Will we... Oh, and the Rosemary. talks that are coming up. Uh -huh. So we'll bring Rosemary on. Yes, Your Holiness. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. I've been Welcome. holding my breath all two hours, hour and a half, <laughs> listening. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, as many people know, there is a seminar in Minnesota, February 21st and 22nd. And between now and then, Kristen will be here in less than two weeks, I think, uh, December 1st through the 7th. And we have talks lined up for him, and looking forward to that. And I think that's about it that I have about the basics. But there's a very much interest, and it well, always... I want, I want people to know that these, these seminars are very different. Uh, one does not replicate a Kundalini seminar. I mean, because the people, the people are what makes a seminar. That's why the... The, the one in Minnesota was so amazing because the people themselves were quite amazing. 
Um, and so I would encourage the people who have already come to the seminar to come back again as well and uh, to, to talk to Rosemary about it and then and, and certain, uh, certain res- restrictions for them could be lifted, possible restrictions. So what do you think, Rosemary? Yes, I do think that. I also would like to mention my one of my commitments was that there be a seminar here. The other commitment I have is that we would have a Kundalini community established here, and we have had two meetings from of with people from that seminar, and the second one we had was a, a phone conference uh, on on a Monday evening, and with a commitment, strong commitment to keep our meetings going, and it's just delightful and. Um, it's a very important thing to to yes. understand the, the necessity to keep this in the population, this expression strong within the population. And you may not have a lot of people around you in your in your home life that that uh, can support this, and so it's good to have a group of people who know what you're going through, who know what it's like, who understand and. And who are there to support you and to have you support them? I mean, it, we need to keep this going. And so I'm very, very happy to hear that, that you've had your first meeting and you're starting to, to get organized. Well, we've had, uh, we've had two meetings. We had an in-person, and we're going to alternate that every three or four weeks with uh, a conference line on, on our phone. So um, both of those. And the next uh, meeting in person is with you when you come, December 1st. And I'm looking forward to that, to seeing people as well. And then they'll be alternating after that. And I made the schedule. I like this. I made the schedule so that like two weeks after the February seminar, we'll have whatever is our third or fourth or fifth or sixth meeting. But we will have that in place for people to join us after their seminar. Well, I think that's wonderful. I think so. I think that... uh that uh, and new people will be invited in and this is also this is really important yes. to get this, this expression into the population we're coming up to to various uh, frequencies of time and the experience that this world will have where these types of communities will be very very important to have and i want to if i may just say when you were saying about the voice and sound and it's amazing and such a gift to do this work chris and thank you and to be talking with people and, uh, and and getting that enthusiasm in their voice and wanting to hear more and working out details so I can show up there with my film, your film. So uh, the, the it's a highly, highly, highly energizing gift. It's yeah. um, a very powerful experience. Well, and so I encourage everybody in the, in the Twin Cities area of, of Minnesota to – Hook up with Rosemary. Uh, Rosemary is going to give her email address. Go ahead. Yes, Rosemary G at usinternet.com. And my phone number as well is 651 452 3161. I, I would love talking with you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you for those announcements. Thank you. And there we are, Centara. You're back in the red on the hot seat. I'm on the hot seat. It's wonderful, actually, um, to hear everything that's happening with the seminar of Chris and then the talks that are coming up in Minnesota. And I have to say, just the love and devotion that I hear from Rosemary for her Kundalini and for the service she's providing and the organization that mm-hmm. she's doing. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I, I really have yeah. to tip my hat to to, to you because you know very much what Rosemary's in the middle of right yeah. now. Uh, Centara, you. I'd like to thank you, and, and I'd like to recognize Eileen and her her huge con- contribution to to the KIS One Systems and Rosemary, of course, and other people as well. I mean, you know, uh, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez. You know, she's putting on. Uh, a seminar, Magdalene de Deus, she's putting on a seminar. I mean, these people are really, really <laughs> taking the time to get out and do these things, and it really, we need to really recognize 
you know, the gifts that they are bringing into the population. So as much as you can, uh, look at look for those advertisements and, and, and like them and, and respond to them. Come to these events. It's nothing like like you'll ever get to experience again. Kundalini people are very, very, very unique. And they're very, very friendly, very beautiful people. Uh, and to make uh, to make contact with them is just a huge gift. I think uh, Laura Soaring will also be coming down from Canada. I'm trying to to manifest that as well as uh, as many people coming from all the way from Ireland. Amelia Santara is going to be uh, you know in in town at that time. And so, and for us though, you know, when we're coming up to to Minnesota. To be able to meet Rosemary in person, to able to be able to meet uh, Eileen Lauro in person, these are also amazing gifts of grace that that uh, Kundalini people can partake of. It's you know it's really nice to be able to be with those that have what you're what you're having. It's a big deal. Mm, it is. Yeah, yeah. So. Before I go, I'm going to do a, a little bit of something here, my dear. I'm going to put you in the blue. <laughs> she That's what the Kundalini wanted you to hear. That's what it wanted you to feel. It picked those notes. It gave itself into that transmission. Listen to it over and over and over. As much as, as you feel the compulsion to hear it. This is alluding to the transmission of the Shakti on the voice that we spoke about earlier in the program. If you have any questions about that, feel free to type them on the uh, chat room there. Any of you have questions there? Amelia, if you have a question about it, then feel free to ask as, as with Eileen or Rosemary. And I'll wait a few moments here for anybody to to uh, <laughs> write something. I I notice people aren't running away, so I'm going to assume that that's a good thing. I see <laughs> the, the the chat room is still populated, so nobody died. I hope. See.
keeping as you listen to this broadcast. For those of you who are sleeping, feel the energy in your dreams. Let the energy manifest your dreams. Feel the energy manifest in your dreams. Oh my goodness. Okay, well I apologize. (laughs) (laughs) Just just with the singing is all. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So do you have anything else to add to this lovely program? Absolutely not. (laughs) (laughs) I'm done. Just thank you, thank you very much, Kristen, for um, for you know answering those questions. And if anybody listening um, wants to ask questions next week, please feel free to drop a line into my inbox, and I will ask on Facebook, and I will ask the question on your behalf next week. Or you can drop a line to. Kundalini Matters at gmail.com and I can ask the question again on your behalf if you like. So thank you very much, Chris. So goodbye, everybody. I missed seeing everybody in the chat room tonight. Good night, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Chris. I would like to thank those who are listening in the archives. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Julie and Julian and EDG and Fasci and guest 1393, guest 1463, MJ Henderson. Madhavasadvi and and Sigrid, I would like to thank all of you for joining us in this conversation, this day, this night, this evening, this afternoon, wherever it is for you. Thank you for listening to our conversation, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>